Hello, this is Romeo Cat Computers, and today I will be making a composite video television transmitter. This transmitter is based off of VK3YE's design that he showed in his second TV transmitter video. I will leave a link in the description to both videos. Towards the beginning of the video, he gives this diagram. I will be keeping to this design, but will be making one major change. Taking a look at the diagram, we see that the video circuit requires a continuous frequency to be inputted into the diode. In VK3YE's case, it is a 4-pin crystal, but I will be replacing that with my own oscillator circuit. Here is the new design. Now let's talk frequency. In order to do that, I need to talk about TV channels, so I will do a small segment on that. Before I do, it's very important to note that I will be talking about the United States TV channels and frequency allocations, and also all of this is relating to the NTSC video standard with its 6 MHz bandwidth and all of its other stuff. First, let's talk about what TV channels are available for me to use. There are three distinct sections. The first one is called Low VHF, which contains channels 2 through 6 and ranges from 54 to 88 MHz. Next is High VHF. It contains channels 7 through 13 and ranges from 170 to 216 MHz. Finally, for the UHF channels, we have channels 14 through 83 and a range of 470 to 890 megahertz. A lot of the UHF channels have been dropped over the years, so I'll give a brief history on that. Starting in 1952, we had channels 2 through 83. Then in 1983, the FCC dropped channel 70 and above for the new cell phone networks and other things. Then in more recent times, 2020 had another loss of channels to make room for the new 5G cell phone systems. As it stands today, we have channels 2 through 51. Looking at this chart, it looks like we also will lose some other channels in the near future. Understand that even though over the years we have moved to mostly digital transmissions, both analog and digital have used the same frequency allocations that we've been using since 1953. Now we can get back to the circuit. I will be trying to target frequencies in the low VHF section. Because I do not have any crystals that are specifically meant to resonate in those frequencies, I will be using harmonics. Looking through my crystal set and doing some math, I found that the best crystals to use will be 20, 24, and 22.1184 MHz. Here are the possibilities with all the harmonics. I chose to use the 22.1184 MHz crystal, and it has a triple harmonic somewhere in channel 3. Now let's test. So here's the circuit put together, and I always make sure to prototype on these solderless breadboards first to make sure I can get a working circuit. And so here's the crystal, the 22.1184 MHz 2-pin crystal, and these two resistors, the 2N2222 transistor, and this capacitor back here all make up the Colpitts oscillator. And then going off of that we have the diode, other capacitor and this potentiometer which is facing away from the camera I'll make up the video circuit and then this right here is a uh, composite video wire it's off camera right now but you'll probably see it later and we have the signal wire going into one side of the potentiometer and then of course the ground going to the ground bus of the entire circuit and of course I will be running this whole thing off of 9 volts so it might be a little bit more powerful than VK3YE system. So let's move over to the TV. So here we have the television in question, which is a Sylvania black and white TV manufactured in 1977. And it's so old that it'll let you go all the way up to channel 83 on its channel knobs. And of course you can see it's so old they felt the need to specify that it's solid state. So anyway, I have the transmitter running, and my uh, or my video source is a little Nikon camera with a composite out. So let's turn on the TV and see what we get. And there we go. There's our signal. Now, of course, I spent a good five minutes tuning around. I have to both adjust the fine tune and the... Uh, channel changer 
knob on uh, the TV and then there is also the little potentiometer on the transmitter itself. Now I will mention that your frequency is obviously not going to be exactly uh, in all of these channels. It will be on some weird frequency. So you're going to need to find a TV with a fine tuned knob. And luckily I have that. And here I'm changing the fine tune. I think this is about the best I'm going to get. And of course I can also use the uh, the TV's brightness and contrast. But I think I have the pretty good. Kind of strange there's some audio, but I think that audio is just from a, a nearby FM station. Understand that this circuit does not support audio. So anyway, I'll show what happens when you adjust the potentiometer. It's very temper temperamental, so i got to be careful with it. But you can see as I turn it, the image gets more and more messy. Here I'll try to turn it back. I'll turn it even further. We get It kind of gets all wobbly. There, that's a whole heck of a lot better. And of course the positioning of the antenna, which in this case is just a long piece of wire, is very important. Now anyway, since it is a camera here, I can uh, get out of the image view. Here we can see, of course I don't have an SD card in right now, but here, here's my ICOM. And here, here's the TV. Yeah, the image is very unstable, because when I'm moving this around it's bumping a bunch of wires. Here's my lamp. And my, oh geez, and my telephone. So yeah, it really works. Later in VK3YE's video, he showed an improved circuit with some extra components. So I went ahead and put that together. Here's the final design I ended up using for this whole project. So here I've made the improved version. And I also went ahead and soldered it onto a project board so everything is perfectly stable. And then I also hot glued some of the wires here just to make sure they don't come yanking off. And here's the composite video lead, and it can just plug into any composite video source. I'll be using the same camera again. You've all, you can also see I've fixated it with a power indicator LED, and there's also the second potentiometer, this one being the 10K one. And everything else here is exactly the same as before. So let's test it out. You can see right away there's a black image. And I already have pre-tuned the TV and I put the potentiometers in their rough position so that I should be able to just turn it on right now. So here we are. You can see I'm using the camera. Here I'll aim it down at my little board here. Works wonderfully except the camera is pretty terrible at focusing but that's the fault of the camera. So here we can go into image view mode. There's a squirrel I took a few years ago. No, I didn't take the squirrel, I just took a picture, don't worry. There's a picture of a cat I took a few years ago. And that one is my grandmother's cat. And we can see all of this through my television system. Now, I believe that this circuit may support color. The only issue is that my o the only TV I have that supports the fine tuning is a black and white TV. I think I might take this downstairs, though, and see on my color TV if I can pick it up. So here I have my Toshiba television, which was manufactured sometime in the early 2000s, and only goes up to channel 69, but luckily that's not important because it has the first few channels that we need. Now the issue with this is that it does not have a fine tune which was convenient on the other TV because we could tune into the exact frequency. But of course the board does not transmit exactly into the perfect channels. But we should be able to perhaps pick up some of the fringes of the signal. Now I suspect that if we did have a fine tune we could get to the exact image. 
It would probably have the color because we are transmitting the whole composite signal, not just Luma. But let's see what happens when we turn the TV on. Right now when I turn it on, it should immediately tune to channel 3. I'll also mention that it does not have a built-in antenna on the TV. However, it does have a random wire sticking out of the antenna jack, which goes over to my board. Now you can see we have something of an image. We can see the message I had earlier. Um, obviously all the colors are completely wrong and uh, it's pretty unstable too, but at least it looks like we're kind of getting something. Now I can try adjusting the potentiometers. It looks like this may be the best signal we're getting, but at least the text is recognizable. I'm going to go ahead and go up one channel, see if we can get a better image. I want to say that ain't half bad. The best I've gotten so far. I'm just going to go ahead and try some other harmonics here. That was not planned. I don't know how I happened to just tune to it. I don't know what channel I was on. I must have gotten confused, but look at that. It just works. And you can see, even though everything's slightly off, with full color, let's take it into camera view. And look at that. We can even do that funny TV thing. There's the board. Everything seems a little uh, purpley, but I mean you can even see the yellow of the composite video cable. Here's the messy basement. Here's the very camera I'm shooting the video on. Now, I'm going to go back into a static view. On uh, my grandma's cat again, I'm going to try adjusting the potentiometer. Yep, that, that totally loses it. So this is the big potentiometer. It appears to be kind of a, a sort of brightness. Well, this one also kind of does that too. And then we lose it. So it looks like channel 4 is coming in very strong. So during the production of this video, I got a hold of a handheld oscilloscope made by Allosun. Now when I first got it, I hooked it up to a bunch of my homemade radios. And it was very helpful not only in seeing the waveforms with my own eyes, but also determining the output power, both of which we can do on this circuit. So I have it hooked up here, the signal connected directly to the antenna output. It's relatively low power, so I don't worry about frying it. And the ground connected to the ground of the rest of the circuit. So let's see what it has to say about this circuit. Now, of course, right away, I have the voltage set pretty high. I'm going to change that. That's about what we want. And then I'll change this. And there's our signal. Here we can see it's fluctuating a lot. But I'll say it's about 0 0.02 volts. Anyway, that's it for this video, so thank you for watching.